everyone. Welcome to Health Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. It's a story we hear too often. A once vibrant person ravaged by Alzheimer's disease while their family is forced to watch. My guest says there are things we all can do today to help in the fight against Alzheimer's disease. Anne Hedreen is the author of the memoir, Her Beautiful Brain. She also produced the film Quick Brown Fox, an Alzheimer's story. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, you know, Alzheimer's is such an important disease because we need to continue to do so much more research. Mm -hmm. uh, because just like your book mentions, and, and I know that your life work mentions, this is a disease about an individual, but actually affects the entire family. It's a family disease, as I like to call it. Absolutely. Um, so tell me a little bit about your family experience mm -hmm. with Alzheimer's. My mother first started showing symptoms of Alzheimer's when she was in her mid-50s, wow. and she died at 74. So it was a long road for us. Uh, in the beginning, I'm one of six siblings. We all had young children at the time, and we, of course, didn't want to believe that this could be happening to our beautiful, brainy mom. And so we said, oh, mom, I'm sure it's nothing. But of course, she was right. She was a school teacher, and she was starting to blank out, as she put it, in front of the classroom and that scared her and she sought testing. She was tested three times over 10 years before she was finally told, Arlene, we think you have Alzheimer's disease. So they, they were looking, of course, a woman in her 50s who was mm -hmm. forgetting things or blanking out. They probably were looking at neurological issues, yep. brain tumors, things, strokes, for instance, is another differential diagnosis. So when, when all that workup was done, it was Alzheimer's. One of the things that you became a pioneer in, and I mm -hmm. call you a pioneer, is on the whole concept of volunteering for Alzheimer's research. Yes. So tell me about that experience and why you did it. That is something that I, I feel fortunate because it's not something that I sought out or knew about. Um, I called the University of Washington Alzheimer's Disease Research Center in Seattle where I live when I was working on our documentary film in 2004 and I was seeking doctors to interview who were working on Alzheimer's research. And the person who initially talked to me said, why don't you volunteer for research? And I said, why would I volunteer? I mean, I don't have Alzheimer's. Aren't I way too young to be in one of your studies? And she said, no, we need healthy adults. We need, uh, you know, all kinds of people at all kinds of different, different places ages, on the spectrum. Right. Yeah. And so she suggested I do that, and she said, your husband can film it, and you can put it in your documentary, which we did. And so what kind of research did they do on you? Well, it, it turned into an annual visit. So every single year I go in and do a battery of memory tests and neurological tests, but I have also done five spinal taps, lumbar punctures, as you wow. doctors so prefer to call invasive them. invasive research, yes. in other words. Well, you could call it that, right. yes. Yeah. But as you know, cerebrospinal fluid is the gold standard for Alzheimer's research. And right. every what, what really sold me was that every single time I had a spinal tap, I created 50 samples for Alzheimer's research. And I thought, wow, you know, I'm not a yeah. wealthy person. I can't donate money, but I can do this. Um, well, you know, in, in uh, the spinal tap, uh, I guess, you, you know, they explained to you what it was and, mm -hmm. and some of the, why don't you tell me about that discussion? Because sure. it's not easy. For, sometimes right. we, we want, you know, we want patients to participate in active research. But, yes. but so what did they tell you about that and what the risk factors were? Right. Well, there are very tiny risk factors, as there are with any invasive procedure. But um, what, what it basically amounts to is lying very quietly curled up on your side, which I'm good at, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they do give you a, a local anesthetic. And so really, the only painful part is when they put in that local anesthetic. Right, so it's a needle yeah. going into your sp yes. spinal canal in that your back, right. and they extract mm -hmm. X amount of fluid, and then they look at the cells. Yes. Uh, however, yes. you being the pioneer in this concept of you know, volunteerism, for, for Alzheimer's, you also say that people can do other things, you know, and, you know, people that don't want to participate in active clinical research, they can mm -hmm. do other things. Give me some examples of those. There are so many research trials going on right now. The Alzheimer's Association estimates uh, well over 100 in well over 500 cities. Um, and some of them include, for example, uh, exercise, which is a big deal right now. The, the idea that getting lots of exercise can really contribute to our brain health. So for example, if that's something you're interested in, you might be you know, put on a, a treadmill and, and right. hooked up to EKGs. Um, another area where there's a lot of research going on is, is in the relationship between diabetes and Alzheimer's. Right. So if you have diabetes or you're pre-diabetic, 
uh, the Alzheimer's researchers would love to hear from you, and they and they might be testing you in in terms of some different insulin products. Um, so there are PET scans, there are MRIs. I've had one of each. Neither was scary, and both were actually kind of interesting. Right. Um, so there are all kinds of different uh, types of Alzheimer's research going on. Now, a lot of people, you know, they would listen to to everything that you have volunteered for, and mm -hmm. they say, "Well, Anne, this is." about your family because it runs in your family. Why is it important to me? Well, <laughs> um, guess what? The baby boom is aging and Alzheimer's is, is now and will continue to be extremely expensive for our country. Uh, $226 billion a year is what it's currently costing us and that's both public money, Medicare, Medicaid and private money out of our own pockets and our insurance companies' pockets. Um, and in addition to that, there are more than 5 million people right now in America who have Alzheimer's disease. That's a huge emotional burden, not just for those people and their families, but for all of us, your right. colleagues, your friends, your right. neighbors, you, 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 everyone knows someone. No, I, I, I think that neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's mm -hmm. is uh, the mantra, if you will, uh, because just like you said, we're, we're an aging population. Mm -hmm. You've got millions of people afflicted by it every day, and I think that, yes, research is needed at all levels, at all levels. It's urgent. One point that you make in your book is about the compassionate approach, or lack of, that employers have mm -hmm. towards letting people say, hey, Bob, I need to leave half an hour early today because I want to go down to the university because I volunteer. Um, you want to get Mm -hmm. employers involved in all of this too, right? I would love to see more of that. I think we can advocate uh, to our employers by saying volunteering for research is a form of volunteering. Many employers have a policy that encourages volunteering. So if you can say, this is what I'd like to do with my volunteer time, that is one way to persuade your employers to let you go participate in a research study. And I think it's just the more we can spread that awareness, both right. in the world. Because I don't think people yeah. know that. I don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't think people know that they can go to their human resources yep. and say, bye, I want to know what your volunteer policy mm -hmm. is. And many companies do have them, and, and you should take advantage of that. It's a wonderful cause. Um, now, where can people get more information? Where can they get this wonderful book, <laughs> Her Beautiful Brain? I love that, that title. Thank you. Uh, it's available um, wherever books are sold and on all platforms. And uh, annhedrine.com is my website. There's plenty more information there. All right. Well, lovely to see you and, and great cause and very important cause uh, for, uh, for people to learn about. Thank you so much for Thanks coming. Thanks for having me. And if you have any health questions, you can send them here at fox at drmanny.foxnews.com. Until next time, I'm Dr. Manny.